Okay, so we're going to talk uh, in the next 30 minutes about children's writing. We're going to talk about pictures, words, sentences, and beyond. So I have a little um, schedule here for you to see. So pictures, we're going to look at the importance and the value of drawing for the young child as a regular daily activity. Then letters within a context, connection and meaning. How do we introduce the letters of the English alphabet to children in a meaningful way? And sentences, how can we use creativity to help our students create and construct sentences in a correct way? I think some of the things I'm going to say are going to correct going to connect to what Miriam said earlier in the last session um, to support sentence building. And then a little bit beyond stories, dialogues, personalization, little things that we can do. So I hope you're going to get lots of ideas out of the session and, um, and hopefully we have some time at the end to answer a few questions. Okay, so pictures. The school environment will be seen, lived in and interpreted by all the young minds that pass through it. You know, they are living, breathing, sensorial beings. Um, all our students, the young ones, the middle ones, the older ones, they're always influenced by what surrounds them. Um, and so this is a picture, a photograph of my school. And I bought you a picture drawn by one of the students. Um, I think I think an eight-year-old drew this. Um, and for some reason, um, he's written cooking on the, on the front. There isn't a sign that says cooking, but I can already tell that that's something that that student likes doing when they come to the secret garden. So environments are very, very important. And learning through play, discovering, doing, making, inventing, exploring, socializing, um, you know, all these things, storytelling, all these things help to construct a new language by nurturing the child with interesting things. And I think that we can definitely bring interesting things into the writing um, activities that we do in our schools too. Here's a little picture of a group of students in our school to do a writing activity um, outside. We've got a table outside in the garden. So when we think about children who come into our, our classes, um, they come with so much inside them. Look at this little cartoon, right? They come with their toys, their friends, the games they've been playing, their pets, interesting things they've seen around. Um, and so we have to remember that, that they have all this inside them and we have to find ways for them to put it out, right? I mean, they're so amazing children, aren't they? And adults can always help children, especially for them to be positive about writing. Look at this lovely picture here. It's probably a demonstration um, but the, this little toddler who isn't writing yet has made her mark by scribbling her own personal message on a piece of cardboard. That is writing as well. That is giving the child space to express themselves with pen and paper or whatever you're going to use. Okay. Thought, found that very cute. Um, so the underlying skills that, that children naturally need to have in order to be able to write there are hundreds of different skills. And you know, that's why we have to know about developmental stages and also give children time, time to understand what it means to write, yes? Time for dexterity. So here are some of the things um, that they have to work on before they can be good writers. So finger strength, the grasp that they have of their tools to write, wrist stability, Spacing, how do they space the letters and the words along a line? The formation and sizing of those letters, capitals, yeah, lowercase. Line regard, how do students learn how to, to start on one side and finish on another, you know? And um, there's a lot of um, sensorial, there's a lot of visual skills that are needed for that. And as I've said, the fine motor skills too, yes? The overall speed in which children can finally write when they're copying from the board to the page. And the big one is concentration these days, right? How do we help them keep focused? So we need to help them develop their fine motor skills. And so these kind of activities, uh, especially in the preschool classroom, but I would say if you can in the primary, and you know, I even do things like this with my teenagers, they really appreciate 
manual activities that have to do with language. So modeling, painting, loose parts play, lots of different weights and textures, little tiny things for little fingers. Yeah, a, a great variety of things, gluing and sticking and the, the scissors skills. All these skills help students um, with their final writing. And they, they should be revisited many times during the school year. And also, if we want our students to produce beautiful work, we have to give them appropriate tools, right? So you can see here, these are the kind of books that we use in our school. They, um, they don't have lines, yeah? especially for the younger learners, because we give them a chance to find their space on the page, to be able to draw and write. Yeah? If we gave them this book with lines, we are dictating where they have to write. You know, if we give them a free empty page, we give them a chance to experiment and learn how to find their way uh, within that page. The same goes with um, materials, right? When the hands are little, they need big chunky things so that they can learn how to become more dexterous, yeah? I see a lot of times um, little children using the thin pencils instead of the fat chunky ones, yeah? So their hands take time to develop, so they need to have the appropriate tools. And little chalkboards or little, um, little mini whiteboards with marker pens where they can do some individual writing uh, are also fantastic in the classroom. So always think about the tools and the quality of those tools. Let's have a little look then about directionality and spatial awareness um, in, in the preschool kids. Um, first of all, they're going to do the scribbling up and down. And eventually by the time they're three, you're going to start to see circles um, and then by four years old, a cross and so on um, until they're able to do a triangle around about five, five and a half years old. And I'll give you some examples, right? You can clearly see the circle being um, experimented with there. And yeah, what, what are the first things that, that children want to draw after they've done the scribble? Is the head, right? The people, the head and the body. That's why the circle is very important to them too. Yeah, and then as they branch out from that, they're able to do body parts. They might do a representation of the hand with many different fingers, the big eyes looking out towards the world. And you can also see the strength that kids have when they're marking on paper, when they're drawing, you can see their strength. You can see how they use color or not. Yeah, I often see, when I see colorful drawings, it makes me think that those children have colorful home lives a little bit, right? Here you can see, this is the same child as the, the, the scribble here on the left. Um, she hasn't quite managed to do the triangle for the house, although she is already separating the sky from the earth. Here's another child's drawing where they are managing to do the triangle. They've got a little swing, they've got details, the dog's house. So there's so much to be learned from children's drawings, you know, um, and connecting drawings to writing is one of the best ways to ease children into the writing process. So uh, in some pedagogic methods, you'll see that the signs of school readiness um, have to do with when they do separate the sky from the earth. And in this beautiful drawing, you can see this child emerging suddenly, right? Um, and you start to see the feet on the ground. In this little picture here in the middle, she hasn't got the actual feet on the ground, she's got the legs. And it was very interesting to see her drawing because she was one of those um, students who were very dreamy, you know, you had to call her back down to earth sometimes. She was always like, often a little dreamy thought pattern. And you could see that a little bit in her drawings. And in this other one, you see um, feet firmly placed on the ground. You see it's a very happy, colorful, social um, mm. demonstration of the child's um, background theme. So the proprioceptive system, the child's sense of their bodies in space. And you know, this is why play is important before we get these students actually into the classroom. Um, and moving, which is uh, another thing that Miriam mentioned earlier, um, we need to give them this possibility. So in order for a child to sit still and visually pay attention to shapes, letters, numbers, their right and left neural pathways need to be tested out in order to develop. And that is not done by sitting on a sofa 
with a mobile phone, all clean and all spruced up. No, it's getting outside, it's playing, it's climbing trees, it's running around. Um, that's the sort of healthy play that we need in order to help our students um, develop their finer skills later on, yes? So playing with their whole bodies. And then the pictures that letters can make. You can see here um, that this letter K starts off with um, a knight in shining armor because that starts with the letter K. It could also be a king, but you can see that the letter starts off as a drawing and then is made into the shape of the letter, right? And also experimented with in many different ways, with different colors, with different forces. So here's a little thing for you to do, um, and I won't be able to see it unfortunately because we're online, but I'd like you to, let me give you the instructions first, Take the first letter of your name and make it into a small figure or picture of something that starts with the same letter. Let me give you my example. So L for Lucy and I've drawn a lorry, l -ori, l Lucy, lorry. And you can see that I've contextualized the first letter of my name. And this is a very nice way um, to introduce new letters to students when it connects to them, right? Not something um, floating around, you know, not something isolated, something that has a meaning and context. And children um, connect very well to images, don't they? Okay, maybe you're going to do that as we work. So whole body writing, yes. In the first picture, you'll see a little boy, he has a clipboard, which is a great way to get writing um, mobile. Yeah, so going out to find something in the garden, uh, researching something, using a graphic organizer to organize where that writing is going to happen. Um, and also you're, you're going to see these chalks. These chalks have been used out in the playground um, and children can draw and label different things. So perhaps they can design body parts as you see there. Um, maybe they can draw a big plate of food and everybody can draw some food on it. Maybe they're going to label the rooms in a house. But it's important that some moments of reading um, get to use the student's body. Maybe they're sitting on the floor, right? Maybe they're standing up. But it's very helpful for quite a lot of students these days to be able to be mobile um, as they work. Okay. And another thing, I haven't tried this out in my school yet, but I found it very interesting because I noticed that some children find it very difficult to, to focus and concentrate. And often when I look at them sitting down, I see that their legs and feet are moving all the time. You know, there's like they're floating around underneath the table. So some of those kind of children, they need support so that they feel present in the classroom. And I'm going to try this out with a few of my students. Um, because I think that um, it might just help them, yes. And that can be a simple thing like a, a putting a shoebox underneath their, their feet so that they can be present, as I've said. So I'm going to finish this first block about pictures with this lovely, um, with this lovely little video. Um, I, I think you'll be able to hear the sound, but if anything, if you don't feel hear the sound, just let me know and I will redo it. But this is just for us to remember um, the beauty and the importance um, that we have in our hands when we're teaching children anything. One of the things that we know is that babies are the best learning machines in the universe. They're the world's original innovators. Every second, a brain is making between 700 and 1,000 connections every second. What does that feel to be about the Yeah, How does it feel to be sure? It's life. It's life. Thank you. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Um, we can't really hear it properly. Would you mind sharing? Okay. Let me start. Let me speak more. What? 
Hang on. Fine. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, you have to interrupt because I need to get it right. Hang on a second. It's got lovely music, hasn't it? But you're on... Yeah. Uh, there we go. I'm going to share the sound again because it went away. One of the things that we know is that babies are the best learning machines in the universe. They're the world's original innovators. Every second, the brain is making between 700 and 1,000 new connections. Every second. How does it feel to be human? This life, what is this? When you sit there and be her, we sit there and come on, see? That's... You do not listen to children, he goes out to that. You can please say that they have a voice and that I am seeing them, that I am listening to what they are talking about. I wanted to be a mother more present. I wanted to be able to listen to them. I wanted to be able to teach them. Oh, I wanted to be able to teach them. The only thing they really care about is whether I'm present. It's all of these little things that really just add to the love. That love is an important part of the economy, which typically is not fully recognized in this society. It's when I talk to my former coworkers about becoming a stay-at-home dad, a lot of them were just like, why would you ever want to do that? Stop for one of the women you fast. Why can't you put this on a mundo de paz, de colaboração, de bem-aventurança? Onde o começo da vida não é levado em conta. They are so blinded by love for me, they almost can't see my flaws. When you pay attention to the beginning of a story, you can change the whole story. Great. It's beautiful, isn't it? And, um, you know, it always, uh, I always get inspired by things like that because we're here to make a difference. We're here in, um, a tough profession sometimes. And, um, yeah, it's our mission to make learning fantastic and exciting and wonderful for children and for teenagers. Right. So let me move on then to words. Now, we need to also to teach some basic understanding to children. Uh, what, what is writing? What does it mean? What does it involve? So really simple things like written words convey a message. In English, we read from the right to the left and from the top to the bottom. There's a difference between illustration and print. The title is the name of the story. Letters can be uppercase or lowercase, and we combine words to make sentences. So here's a little question for you to pop in the chat box. I want to know what other materials you use other than paper? What do you use or do you make paper into something else? Yeah, what do you use? Because we, we, we have lots of possibilities, right? And this is the reason why I'm going to share my writer's toolbox as well. Things that I think are great to have in the classroom um, when we are going to do writing activities, okay? So here we go. Um, Post-it notes, right? Post-it notes are brilliant for one word um, interactions. Um, children can write or draw on them and they're very flexible to stick up um, onto the wall or onto the board or onto a big poster. They can be used for brainstorming ideas, a class survey, maybe peer editing. We recently did this thing in our school called um, the Mistake Detectives, um, where children had to identify um, mistakes in, in some of their written work and, um, and help each other you know, identify those mistakes and correct those mistakes. And that can be done by making little notes on post-its too, right? 
What else? Mini books. Yeah, you know, I love little things for little children. And um, these mini books have been um, quite successful with our primary school kids. They come, um, they're made from a piece of A4 paper folded into a little mini book. And I'll tell you the name so that you can um, Google it later. So it's folded into this little mini book um, with six, I folded it wrong now, with six different pages. Um, and I'll show you, you just fold it properly, how it works, okay? So you have the cover, the front cover and the back cover, and then you have six possible pages. This is a, a little one about um, kindness. Give someone a smile. How can you be kind? Listen to people, give them a hug, carry a bag, be kind and patient and help people um, to share, to shine, sorry, help people to shine. So mini books and other little bits and pieces are great ways to get students interested in um, writing like a little mini story, okay? Even teenagers, teenagers like to do this too. They like to um, do cartoons with speech bubbles in these little mini books. Um, and you can Google them. If you, if you pop into Google like a zine or zine mini books, you'll be able to see lots of different um, videos of how to make them and lots of ideas of how to fill them up as well. Okay. Um, a roll of paper can also be great um, for a little sentence or something and you can reveal it nice and slowly like that. For dexterity, magic, anticipation, little slip of paper in a roll. And also messages in matchboxes. I love little messages and little tiny things that hide something curious. So you could write a little message in a matchbox if you need to give it to one of your students who needs to breathe, slow down a little bit. Messages in matchboxes. What else? Ah, um, stories that, um, sorry, words that you can write on different textures. So um, recently some students in our school, they've been writing on stone. So quite difficult. They used a marker pen, they painted them. So here are a couple, you are loved and <laughs> you rock, yeah? But it's so different when you are writing on something that you weren't expecting, yeah? Because usually we write on paper, we write in our notebooks, we even write in our course books too, right? So giving the students uh, something different, pushing them a little bit further, um, usually keeps them super motivated to produce writing. Okay. And then, like I said, reasons to write. Here are some of the things that we did at the beginning of term here because uh, school, the school year begins here in February uh, in Brazil. And so ways that we can get to know our students is to get them to do like a little mini profile. And we, we like this one very much because uh, it gives a description of the of the, the student and then it says who they are. But we can encourage our students to not just write um, sort of basic sentences, by, but we can encourage them to add um, interesting adjectives and ways of saying things. Like, for example, my eyes are as blue as the ocean. Yeah. Um, and so that's what we've been doing recently in our school. Um, also, as a teacher, it's interesting for you to for your students to get to know you. So you can also, alongside their work, you're going to perhaps do one for you. Um, if it's very young students, then maybe I would use images for my favorite things, but then, you know, it's a way of um, using writing um, for a reason. And this is one done by um, one of the teen groups um, who also uh, wants to draw as well and write. So it depends on the student, you know, um, some students are very happy just writing, but other ones want to illustrate what they're doing. And why not? Why not? In this particular activity, it worked really well. So moving on to sentences now, okay, I'm going to share some of the things uh, as well that I think might be helpful um, for you in your context too. First of all, all efforts are worthy when children try to write. Yes, this is a this is a, a first grader, um, and you can see this is about um, what to do when you're feeling angry or sad. Things that you can do. Um, uh, count to ten. 
breathe or take five breaths, drink water. You can see the illustration of the water bottle there. And you can see that this student is still trying to organize their sentences in the space. Yes, um, but it's nice that they've got plenty of space on the page to, to do that. Um, and you can see like they put intentional strength uh, on, on the words that they're writing to, right? Um, learning the spacing, letter formation, the size, you've got uppercase and lowercase kind of mixed together there. Um, and they're able to illustrate their ideas. So let's celebrate all efforts of all kinds of writing that children produce, you know, according to their abilities and their, their developmental stage, right? Now, a couple of ways that we can do like a sort of more collective class. This is quite good, I think, for when you've got um, larger classes of students. Uh, you can do interactive writing or shared writing. So interactive writing, the students and the teachers talk together about the ideas. And then some students um, will come up and write with the teacher. In the shared writing, the students do, do the talking and the teacher does the writing. Yeah? So one one interactive writing is more like a construction of the written text. It's slightly smaller and shared writing is really focusing on all the mechanics that our students need to help them. So let's look at what that means. Um, the what, the why and the how. And you're going to see that both of these types of collective writing, um, a lot of the skills are tran trans, um, what's the word, they, they sort of transform uh, from one to another, you know, they, they kind of go together. But here are some basic things. So the teacher shares the pen in this. So um, you're, and it's usually a very short sentence or, or small paragraph, right? Um, the spelling uh, and word choice is up to the students. Um, and then you'll be able to see also um, how your students are doing with their spelling too, right? So it highlights their language skills as you, and they don't have to write, you know, they're going to come up and write one word. So it's, it's possible. They don't have to write a whole sentence on their own without that support, but they're able to be interactive in the writing process. Um, it also supports phonological awareness, um, which, which shared writing does as well. Let's look at that. Um, so the teachers write the whole time. Students help with the text orally, and you're going to see the kinds of things that they um, want to add to the text. The text can therefore be longer. Um, and as the teacher writes, it highlights the sounding out of words. So, you know, so we're writing on the board, so we're sounding, sounding out the words as we write. And that can be really helpful as well for some students um, as we support their writing process. And then, you know, this is all about collaboration. This is all about um, checking the stakes, um, rewriting and rereading and sharing ideas. So for example, um, in the shared writing example, you'll see that the teacher can do, oh, we're going to start a sentence. So what do we need for the first letter? The little handle shoot up and say, oh, oh we need a capital letter. Great. Okay. So the, t, h, e, the, the. So we'll start with that. Oh, we've come to the end of this idea. What do we need? We need a full stop. Okay. So it's really um, helpful for the students to see how a written text is constructed. Yeah. Okay. They might say things, um, they might suggest things and then you'll say, well, well, how can we say that? How can we say that? How can we write that? Or they might say in their first language and you might say, well, how can we say that in English? What's that word? How does it go? How does it sound? Do you think it starts with a TH or does it start with a CH or how does it start? So you can really, depending on what you know about your students, you can really draw attention to what you know they need. And also things like, oh, shall we, um, shall we say that the elephant is big or enormous? <gasps> enormous teacher let's write that the elephant is enormous so they really you know it keeps them motivated it keeps them on focus as you try to involve them in this writing process and you know what's lovely too let me just take a little sip of water what's lovely too is when we have materials in our classroom that really 
support and scaffold the writing process. Yeah, so I'm going to show you some pages from um, Global Stage um, and, and just highlight some of the important features. Okay, so visual literacy is very much part of this course. So when um, students are introduced to new vocabulary, they can clearly see the images connected to each word, right? Here they're going to listen and they're going to number. So they've got plenty of practice in the initial vocabulary that they're going to need later to write. Recognition, listen and say. And then they come over to a graphic organizer or this little mini pie chart here where they're going to put members of the family that are male, members of the family that are female, and then in the middle, the collective family names, cousins, grandparents, for example. But you know, the good thing is that all the language that they need to do that writing is on the page. Okay, so it's all there. It really helps us a lot. And then also scaffolding for success, right? First of all, here students are going to notice the language. Can you see this little box here? It says, watch. When does he say please and thank you? So looking for specific structures in a sentence or in a speech bubble that you really need in this context. And then ordering the phrases. So they get the whole chunk of the phrase and they have to think who's saying what when and what's the order of this exchange. And then checking pronunciation. Um, working with phonics and checking pronunciation is excellent as well for writing because as children learn, they learn, as I said, to sound out the words as they write. And that helps them make less spelling mistakes for sure. Uh, then they're going to plan the conversation, right? They're going to think about ways they can ask for things in different places, which I love. In a, you know, in a party, in a cafe, in a home. And then they have to set up their conversation, yes? They're going to write it. So you see, they've been carefully brought through the process. And again, the language is there. They just have to notice it and use it. Here, children have already um, looked at the language. They've looked through vocabulary, grammar, global citizenship. They've even watched a video. And now they're going to write about their special person. Um, so you're going to see first a very clear example with, a, with an image. You're going to see how they have to notice and improve the sentences. So here they're looking at um, first capital letters and full stop. So they have to pay attention to that. They're going to be, their attention is going to be drawn to that. Then they're going to work with the graphic organizer, right? To think about their special person and think about adjectives connected to those people so they can use that in the text. And then finally, they're going to make their special person poster. Yeah. So many of the things that I've speak, uh, spoken about previously um, are, are here in our uh, regular course book page. And then the last one where we get students to think over what they've learned. Here you're going to see um, two different pages, one from the first level and one from, um, one from units four, one from units nine. You can see that in the first one with the tree, they have to draw or write their answers. And that for me is like really respecting um, the child's moment, where they are in their, in their writing process. You know, maybe they do feel more comfortable in just doing a drawing. Maybe they feel tired that day, or maybe they love writing. They want to fill that whole tree with lots of different things. Yeah. And you can see that the outlines of both these pages have to do with what they've been learning as, as a, opposed to content. So in the first one, they've been looking at animals and in the second one, they've been looking at professions. So yes, the shapes connect to each unit content. It's about self-reflection. What can I do next? How did I do? And then finally, exciting curiosity, um, where there's a little cartoon at the bottom asking them to um, try and find something in the next unit. Yeah. So I find all these things like very, very supportive and de developmentally appropriate for our students. And what about beyond? What about beyond? What other things can we do? I'm going to share with you um, one of my storybooks from when I was little. I was about seven or eight, I remember. And we had this story writing book where we were able to write and draw, which for me was very pleasurable. And I'm going to show you, so you can see that um, there are some mistakes in the writing and that the teachers come with a pen and, you know, corrected a few things. Um, I'll tell you the story. I just want you to pay attention to 
um, what the teacher says on the next slide, okay? So basically it's about um, a fiery tongued dragon um, who goes for a walk and meets a mouse um, and the mouse is worried that the dragon's going to eat him. Um, but he says he's not going to, um, if you don't eat me, then I'm sure we're going to be great friends. And they do, they turn into great friends um, and they pick flowers and go home. Um, and then they put the flowers in a pot yeah, and they make some soup. But look what my teacher wrote, careless writing. She didn't say, what an amazing story. Oh, I love your drawing of the dragon. Oh, I can see there's a mouse there, yeah? So we have to take a lot of care in the way we mark writing, not with a red pen, not with mean writing, with constructive criticism, with helpful ways that we can help our students to improve their writing, yeah? This was, you know, in the 70s, and I'm pretty sure, and I, I hope that, you know, we, we don't do that like that anymore. But, um, you know, you, you know that you can make or break uh, students' interest in writing um, in terms of what feedback you give them about it, yes? And then one last little um, uh, dynamic for you to do with your students. Let's say you've got um, your primary school students, they're not necessarily writing full sentences, but you want to work with the story. So they can tell a story in seven words. So you ask them to write down seven words. They can be nouns, adjectives, or verbs, and they have to make up a story using the words. And you're going to invite them to act it out using mime, or it could be um, using a little puppet. I'm going to use my little puppet, Sophia, to show you what I would do. And we can repeat these words um, many times in order to tell the story. So, walking, 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 hot, walking, walking, stop, Whoa. a tree, a tree, a tree, an apple, an apple, jump, 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 it. And that, in seven words, is a story. It's definitely doable, and it includes more children to have a go at something. So finally, don't forget to document uh, your students' writing, because you can have these gems, you have these presents, you have these gifts that children do with their writing. This one is um, for homework, and it was, um, what would you like to do working when you are grown up? please draw yourself working. And this girl of 11 drew herself as a horse whisperer. Fast forward 10 years, what's she doing now? Working with horses as a horse whisperer. And why not? So we've talked about um, how to incentivate children to write. We've talked about taking care of their developmental processes giving them lovely materials to use, exciting them with a wealth of different ways and different things to, to, to write about and to write with, yeah? And to remember to take care and to excite your students to write, write together, write in pairs, write in small groups, and, you know, try and make it as positive as possible because maybe we have some amazing new writers out there and that's what the world needs, right? Okay, so that's my talk. Um, I think we might have some time for some uh, questions. If you'd like to get in contact with me, there's my email. You can also follow The Secret Garden or you can follow me uh, on um, Instagram. So I'm going to stop sharing and let me have a little look. Do we have time for any questions, Alex? Yes, uh, yes, let's see. Well, thank you so much. That was an amazing session. Uh, experiences, real life information, sharing so much knowledge. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, so we have a, a quick question from Analia here. She asks um, if, for example, a kid, uh, if kids are learning Spanish as the first uh, language, if they're learning how to write in Spanish, or let's say examples of Portuguese, if that would um, hinder the process of learning to write in English, if you see that as a problem to teach all at, at once? 
Yeah, that, that's a really good question because it's a question that not only a lot of teachers um, uh, are worried about, but a lot of parents as well. Um, I can only tell you through my own experience, both my daughters were born here in Brazil. And um, why, the first thing is that children are amazing. They're able to, 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 to work, you know, they're trans languages. They're able to work with many languages and, and you know, go back and forth from one to another. Um, and, and that's what I saw my children do. I never saw them um, get confused um, between the two languages um, because they're, they're, they're different too, right? The way that we write in English, different to the way we write in Portuguese, different, we have masculine and feminine, we have all the accents, I think that is similar in Spanish. Um, so in my um, experience, I haven't seen children get confused at all, especially if it's done, you know, with, with beautiful stories, and uh, you know, totally connected to what they find interesting in their in their age in their age group. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Um, somebody is asking about the mini books that you've shown. Um, <laughs> if they are like those origami, like the concertina booklets. Um, let me just show show one more time. So basically, um, you get a piece of A4 paper and you fold it in half like that. Yeah. And then you fold it um, like in half again, like that, right? Um, and then you fold it into a square like that. And then what you need to do in order to make it into a book is that you have to, you can, you can feel it too, but you have to make a slit with a pair of scissors. This is the folded part, can you see? And you have to cut here in order to release the pages. Yeah. And then basically you, push it together into a book. Wow. If you, if you Google, if you Google, you get a link. If you Google Zine, can you see that? Yeah. Z, uh, oh, Z yeah. and E. Yeah. You can find lots of different videos of how to make these little books. So that's the key word. Z I N E Zine mini book. Good luck. Yeah, I hope okay. you get to do it. That's, that's amazing. Um, okay. I think we got, Time for one more. Um, here we have somebody who's asked, uh, let's see, oh, okay, about the Waldorf, uh, if this is related to Waldorf or if it's related to the, um, they say the Cosettini sisters from Ros Rosario in Argentina. Uh, it, what, what's the background behind this? Well, um, yes, because um, my daughter studied in a Waldorf school and a lot of my students come from a school like that. Um, but I also use other pedagogic methods and uh, like Montessori and Hegri and Emilia. And, you know, what I always look for when I'm looking for materials um, are things that are beautiful and things that are aesthetically pleasing, things that are gentle, that don't push the child, you know. It's exactly like these notebooks, you know. It gives them a whole page to do whatever they want, to experiment and learn on their own. Otherwise, you know, we do. When we give things ready all the time, we rob them of that learning experience. And it's the learning experiences that motivate them to want to learn more and do more. So, yeah, anything that is gentle and beautiful, put it into the classroom. ASAP. <laughs> yeah, that's beautifully great. put. I think it's a great way for us to stop here and uh thank you just a really amazing session lucy and thanks uh, yeah always great to see you and and to exchange ideas thank you so much again